Hi guys, welcome to another video tutorial with me, Claris. In this video, we are going to be exploring how to use or make the most of our angular shader uh, in the free, uh, loose watercolor style of painting. Uh, brushes like this, like the angular, the um, uh, the wash, even the filbert, they are so, so, so uh, helpful when it comes to loose style of painting because you get all these, they're able to give you all these organic shapes that a regular round pro probably wouldn't. So this is like the regular round, nice pointed tip, so you t typically don't get, you you aren't able to get some of the strokes that we would get as easily with <clears throat> brushes like this. Now this was part of the, uh, one, two, three, four. This was one of the four brushes that came in the Velvet Touch set by Princeton. And so yeah, let's let's explore and see what we can do. I am using some leftover paint that I had from a previous painting. And then for my um, my paper, I'm using the Bao Hong, 100% cotton. And then I've got water ready and uh, that's it, we're good to go. So, I'm going to start off by activating some of the colors that I have here. I've got some crimsons and some reds happening. So I'm just going to get whatever color I have here. And what I want to show you guys is a couple of different ways that you can use this brush to get some interesting strokes that will help you create flowers for instance so I've zoomed in so you can see better all right so some of the some of the different things that you could do or different ways that you could use this brush to to create some nice pretty flowers so I'm going to start off by using by doing a couple of loose strokes now you can use your brush flat like this and then I suggest also using it to the side like this to get thinner strokes okay so here we go, I'm doing a stroke like this, right? This is like almost kind of like that Nike sign. Dipping the tip of my brush in water, let's just say we're doing a rose. Now I'm going to use just the tallest tip to kind of do something like this. Create that nice little comma almost, right? Dipping back in water again, we're gonna try and form this rose. If you've done any of my rose tutorials, you know pretty much how that goes. We're, we're using different angles of this brush to get our nice C curves. And you can see right away with the amount of pressure that you, you know, depending on how much you press down, like see I'm going sideways, I'm pressing down, going outward, leaving that white space, you're able to get some really interesting shapes. Again, dipping in water, I'm going to do a light stroke like that over there. Notice how this can also translate into being a leaf, for instance. So I'm doing a couple of light strokes at the top as well. Give us that nice um, airy look. And you can see how I'm, now I'm dominantly using the side of my brush to create all these additional strokes. And if I end up using another full width of the brush to kind of create another stroke look like this which also translates really well when you're doing something like flowers so in like in all my videos I say you know don't be afraid to try new things press down on your brush see how much you can get try and you know really gain or master control over your brush control and see what happens um, and just play around. Take a sheet and just play around. And uh, yeah, you might just surprise yourself in terms of what you can achieve. So this is one way you can get a flower. There's honestly so many other ways that you could probably achieve this result or similar to this. But uh, keeping it basic for now. So we'll do this. And then I'm just going to take some of the darker shade to show you like another basic sort of flower. So for instance, if we just want to create something that is a little more uh, like five petal flowers, so you can use your brush like this. 
actually I like to hold it this way and create a petal. This is also how you would do a leaf. So you just hold it that way and then you do it the other side as well. Flip your brush over and do it on the other side. And there you go, you have a petal, right? So all I did was do this and trail off and then switch to the other side and do the same thing. I believe this is also how people have previously done the flowers for hydrangeas or the hydrangea petals. And now I'm just using the tip of the brush to sort of go in and do looser petals because that's what I want for this flower. I want to keep my strokes nice and loose and fun and pretty. Okay, so that's pretty basic, right? I'm going to add another stroke here, allow that color to nicely blend in. Let's try and do some, some leaves at this point. So I'm just going to get a little bit of the yellowish green from my Prince, um, not Princeton, from my White Nights and I'm just mixing it in with, I think this was a little bit of sepia, I'm not quite sure, could be wrong, but I typically just want like a nice darker green or more wooded green and so again you can use this one brush to create so much so for instance I'm going to do a stem by just using the the tip of this brush and again this requires a little bit of brush control so um, using the stem oh sorry using the tip just kind of lightly draw that in draw another one kind of going outward this way and you can draw the extending stems if you wish just like that and then do your leaves so depending on what kind of leaves you want to do so I'm going to try and do the thin leaves so there we go all I'm doing is using the tip except this time instead of going lightly to create thin lines I'm using the tip to press down and create some leaves for me. Same thing over here. This way I'm gonna go the other direction because I wanted this leaf to be curved a little bit. And so you can see that you can get a ton of different organic shapes with this angular brush. So never just discard it or you know, don't like not explore or experiment with it because there's just so much you can do. Okay, so those are the thin leaves. How about some nice thicker leaves? Okay, so let's do a couple down over here. So I'm gonna do one, a stem extending down this way. And then from here, I'm using the, again, the, the tip of the brush pressing down and trailing off. And this is one way you can do a leaf. In fact, I may have even done a video on pansies. I think, I'm pretty sure I did, showing you how to create the pansy leaves like this, I believe. I can't quite remember. So again, pressing down, using the tip, right? Pressing down, trailing off. And then you can always modify the shape if you want it to look a certain way or what have you. Easy enough, right? So the more you extend, the longer the leaf will get, obviously. And the less you extend, the shorter it'll be. So it really depends on what you're looking for and how you want your leaf to look. And then you can just sort of do the lighter 
flowy leaves here and there. Again, you get some amazing shapes with these brushes for a loose style of painting. So as you can see, we've got some nice thins, we've got some nice regular leaves, we've got some flowers. So there's a lot to be done. So I hope you guys found this video um, insightful on how you could possibly use your angular brush to take your loose watercolor flowers to the next level. Um, let me know in the comments what you thought. If you have an angular brush, if you plan on using it, if this has sparked a lot of ideas within you and you're like, I'm ready to go, let's take a sheet and start painting. Um, I'd love to see what you come up with, so please tag me. And one thing I want to say is just feel free to take a sheet and select some colors that you like and just go crazy painting all over. Here's an example of what I mean by all over. So this is a sheet that I sort of just went to town with using the angular brush. All of this right here, angular brush. All of this right here, angular brush as well. So, you know, explore contrasting colors or just take whatever colors are left over on your palette and just practice because this is how you learn and this is how you get accustomed to not just the medium of watercolor but also using your brushes and getting various sorts of shapes and such. Alright, so thanks guys for watching. Hit that like button if you found this uh, instructional video helpful to you. And please also consider subscribing. You can tag me on Facebook and on Instagram. As I mentioned previously, I'd love to see your work. And that's it. Thanks, guys. Bye.